All right. Thank you very much. Let's try this again. Um, I'm Jared Kandra, and I'm excited to run Chronocross uh, Radical Dreamers Edition Links Percent for you. Um, fast forward today. And with me today for commentating is uh, Railcoon. Hi, I'm Railcoon. I go by they, them pronouns. I love this game a lot. I'm really happy to be here to help uh, take you all through this. But we got a pretty long intro, so I think we're just going to hop into it if we can confirm Serge's name. Cool. So is my dude the the winning name for Surge? It sure is. We've got my dude, two words, and the D the first D in dude is lowercase. Oh, okay, cool. Nope. All right, so I'll start with a countdown. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right, so this is Chrono Cross. We're doing Fast Forward, which is important because you see those little arrows in the bottom left. That means the game's going fast, as you can see right now. Uh, we're also doing Links Percent, which is also known as Links at Fort Dragonia. It means that we're going to stop about a third of the way into the game when we eat links at the end of this dungeon, actually, when we get back there. Uh, you'll notice right away that we've got enemies on the overworld, just like in Chrono Trigger. So dodging them is really important, especially since in this opening section, none of what we do here matters in the, the long term of the game. So we just want to avoid all the fights, hit all the story triggers, just get out of here as fast as we can. So even if we have to slow down, dodging fights is the biggest time save in this section. So you'll see uh, Jer Jerica turning off fast forward and getting trolled a little bit because uh, these bats, they swoop in out of you out of nowhere. There's a couple like invisible walls that they normally don't go past and then sometimes they'll just uh, stop and you think you're fine and then they swoop in and they get you. The bats are, they're bad. We, we yeah, don't like the worst. bats around here. <laughs> so we're going to get some uh, foreshadowing to things that we're not going to see in this run. Uh, I love this game, so if you want to see what they're <laughs> foreshadowing to, uh, play the game or watch another speedrun the full game, because we're this, we're this is kind of a bite-sized Chrono Cross experience here today. Uh, and if you want more Chrono content after this, you should definitely donate to the Chrono Trigger incentive. Yeah, but definitely. we got a bit of a cutscene here, Threech, if you want to read a couple donations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I can't agree with you more. We're at $1,140 1, out of 4000 for that Chrono Trigger run. So already making great progress, but we do need you to donate if you want to see that. <laughs> We've got a $25 donation from Brian that says, My favorite part of Chrono Trigger is when Chrono has a bad time travel trip. Then he looks at the camera and says, Man, that Chrono triggered me. Oh, Classic. boy. Classic. So... We wake up after a really weird dream. We're back in our village. We're going to talk to Lena, our kind of girlfriend. Um, she very much wants us to be in a relationship. We're not too sure, certain about it. And unfortunately, in the speed run, the fastest choice in every Lena conversation is to be mean to, Le to Lena. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be kind of a jerk to go fast, which is kind of a long-standing tradition in RPG speedrunning. We're going to buy a couple fireballs just because those are going to help us get through the first dungeon here pretty quickly. And uh, we're going to move on to Lizard Rock, which is going to have our first bit of RNG because we've got some materials we need to pick up while we're doing the required story thing. We need some humor. Uh, we ideally want a feather, which is a rare drop from these Komodo pups. And we need a fang. There's backups for all of these. Missing the fang kind of sucks. It's not the end of the world. Just means that Kit will do less damage later on. But ideally, we'd like to see all three. This is a pretty rare formation, but it has this beach bum in it. Uh, so while sometimes you might run away from some of the bigger formations in this game, getting the beach bum is good because that's where we get the, the humor. That little lizard there is what drops the fang. So hopefully we get a humor and a fang. And these pups have a 10% drop rate of the feather. If we miss the feather, that's absolutely required. And there's a chest later on that we can take a few seconds to go out of way to grab it. Uh, but just getting into the battle system, there's a lot of things on screen. There's element level, it says level 3, there's stamina 3. When Jerrica is attacking, there's numbers on the left side of the screen. Oh my goodness, what's all, what all is going on? Okay, so... <laughs> Chrono Cross, yeah, there's a lot of information, but it's, it's easier to digest. We got a humor and a fang, that's good. No feather, nice. but we got both the humor and the fang is important. 
So when we're attacking, you can choose a light, medium, or heavy attack. Those are the one, two, or three. And they use that much stamina. A light attack is one stamina, a medium attack is two stamina, and a, a fierce attack is three stamina. I'm just going to so, take this. Yeah. Uh, when I get hit by this one, I usually just kill it anyway because yeah. it's a humor. So, you know, you have two guaranteed humor at this point. It's not the end of the world. And waiting for him, especially in fast forward, takes forever. Um, but you'll notice there's a percentage next to the one, two, and three. And that's the accuracy. Every time you hit an attack, the accuracy for all of your further attacks in that salvo of attacks, as we call it, will go up. So the the lower number of attacks are more accurate and that can boost the accuracy of the harder hitting attacks. The only attacks that can crit is the three or the fierce attack. So in some instances, we'll just slam a three, three, leave it up to RNG and hope we get lucky, maybe get a, a, a crit in there. Especially in these low level enemies, sometimes you can take some risky attacks just because a three will one shot most of them. This whole early dungeon is a lot of just risk management because you can get through this pretty quickly without the enemies getting turns, or you can play it safer and have a less variance. So the other thing that happens is every time you land an attack, the one, two, or the three, it charges your element level, which you see Surge has that level zero, and every time he lands attacks, it'll go up to like one, two, three, and you use those levels to cast your elements, which is our magic in this game. The big thing is that using an element costs seven stamina and you can go negative and if everybody is negative at the same time the mechanics on why it happens are too complex to get into in this run but you get a bunch of free stamina is the, is the consequence of what happens so at many points throughout this game we're routed around trying to get everybody negative stamina at the same time because then the enemy will take a turn and you get way more stamina back than you would anticipate so the basic combat loop is we're using the basic attacks just to land damage, build up our element levels, and in most instances throughout the game we're avoiding elements unless they're buffs or debuffs just because their animations are long. There are some exceptions to that coming up, but we also in the top left there's that field element, and we used a fireball to kill one of those pups because it puts a red on the field, and with red on the field red elements do more damage, so then we hit the 2-2-2 two, two, two on this boss, cast a fireball at plus two because you can equip it at a higher level than its base. So now the fireball does more damage since we equipped it higher level than its default. And there's a red on the field, so it does even more damage. And that just lets us one shot that boss there real quick. I was not paying enough attention. Did we get a feather? No, no feather. No but we feather. got the fangs and plenty of fangs and humors galore. So. so now we have to talk to Lena about the nature of our relationship. She was, you know, are we taking it seriously? And we get to be mean to her a little bit more. So while that's going on and the cutscenes happening, there's another good opportunity for some donations here, Threech. Fantastic. Thank you. We have a $25 donation from Rendaw who says, let's go, Jericandra. Great to see you showing this off after all the hard work you've put in. We may not get cat dance today, but instead, let's see Lavos get taken down instead. <laughs> hey, and thanks, Ren. We have a $500 donation from Marley who says, Anonymous donates $500 with a comment that says no comment. <laughs> wow. Hmm. And just as an update on the new Game Plus run, we are at $1,765 out of 4,000. So we're almost halfway there, chat. You are already doing an incredible job to make that happen. We want to see that. I want to see Jarek <laughs> show off the world record pace for Chrono Trigger. It's going to be awesome. For the new Game Plus run, it will be incredible. So if you want to see that happen as much as I do, get your donations in and put them toward that incentive. Also, awesome. as a quick reminder, we are getting close to when we pick up Kid. So if people want to get their their last minute snipes on the Kid name, this is probably your last opportunity. It's coming up pretty fast. So something weird happened and we kind of collapsed on the beach. And this is the very typical like RPG isekai situation. We're, we're back home, but everything is wrong and everything's different. This is the, the Chrono Trigger is all about traveling through timelines. Chrono Cross is about traveling through different uh, worlds on um, like different multiverse kind of deal. So we've entered a world where when Surge was attacked as a kid uh, by a panther demon. Yes, a panther demon. That's how they explain it in game. Uh, he didn't survive in this world. So we're in a world where we're supposed to be dead. And 
It's very confusing to Surge, and we're going to go talk to Lena, and she's very not happy about us saying that we're Surge, because, <laughs> I mean, she kind of had a crush on us even when we were a kid. So she tells us to go visit his grave, and that's going to set off the big sequence of consequences that gets the story rolling from the, the slow start of our chosen JRPG protagonist in a small village. is just heading off to visit this grave of our own grave because we're alive but not at the same time and this is where if we were missing humor there's a bunch of beach bums here you can take those out it's a nice little backup and uh, we're going to meet Kid here we're going to do a fight and this is where the routing in this game kicks in there's amazing notes for this game if you ever want to pick up just like a casual speed run you can join the Chrono Speedruns Discord there's a Chrono Companion with a bunch of different notes and the notes for this game go so hard so Ideally, what happens here in this first fight is Id has been gaining stats as we got our first level up in the background, so she could have plus magic, she could have plus strength. That's one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that stat level ups are random-ish. They get influenced. If you have bad luck, you have a higher chance of getting the stats, basically. So if you watch the damage that Kid does here on her first attacks, then we can get an idea of what her stats are and then route around that. And these tutorials from uh, Salt and Pepper, before these tutorials finish, they always have 10,000 health. So we don't want to do any damage to them before the tutorial, because then it's just wasted animation time. There's no point. So we saw 19 damage on the Magma Bomb. And that means that she did get a magic up. I wasn't watching her damage enough, so missed out if she has the strength up but in general we just want to take out uh salt first then we go after pepper and that leaves karsh by himself and what there's a there's a script for this fight on the best case scenario and what always happens is surge and kid miss way too many attacks for the percentages and then your stamina gets out of rat whack and then you just have to improvise so right now we've got uh kid and negative so we send surge and negative at the same time so Karsh will take a turn, and then even though Karsh really only advanced the turn forward a few AP, we gained a bunch of stamina back. And that's what we call a stamina refresh. Because every enemy has what they call the AP in the background, where every time you use AP, which is using stamina or using an element, that counts down when it hits zero, then they get their turn. But there's a lot of ways we can manipulate this. Uh, they don't immediately get their turn. You can delay their turns by pressing multiple attacks at the same time, which we call stamina pushing. So if you use a 3-3, three, three, then the enemy won't get a turn until after you're done attacking. Are we adults? Uh, yeah, we do need Kid's name here. All right, let me quickly refresh. <laughs> yes, the name for Kid is Adult with a Yay. capital A. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you so much to everyone who donated. And I do want to make a quick note. Those name incentives did close at the beginning of the run. So, oh, get ready cuz we're going to have some we're going to have some good ones tonight. Yeah, I was peeking at the name options so far. And this is the hardest part of the speed run. We have to say no to kid, kid three times. Uh, this game when you're playing on the PC version does allow turbo. Don't recommend turboing this section. You can if you say yes to kid, kid joins your party and you don't get Lena. And you can do Fort Dragonia without Lena, but I I don't recommend it. It's Speaking not of fun. Speaking of Lena and Pashul, what are their names coming up? All right. Let's see. Lena's name, oh boy, is Bare Feet. All one word, <laughs> capital B, capital F. And Pashul, oh, I'll let you know when you're ready. All right, so Bear. B-A-R-E-F-E-E-T. The B and the F are capitalized, and it's all one word. Oh, B and you, uh, you got some extra spaces in there. Oops. All right, that looks great. Uh, looks good to me. All right, and we got Pashul. Okay, Pashul. Oh, it's gonna be all lowercase. QP. 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 <laughs> Thank you to everyone who paid currency to make that happen. 
felt like we were in last night again there for a second through each. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the short version of what I was explaining before is that the combat system has a lot of depth. Most of it you're never going to encounter casually because the game does not the best job of explaining it to you. And we're going to abuse the combat system heavily to reduce the number of turns that enemies get. Uh, so if we ever see Jer Jerica doing a turn that looks slightly suboptimal, like why would you pause there? Why would you wait? That's usually because of stamina pushing. You have to make sure that you're timing the attacks in a particular way to, to make that happen. And this is just Chrono Cross. That dog normally stays in the top right corner there. Uh, and if it does wander down here, there's this tiny little choke point. You can barely get by it. And, you know, sometimes they just mess with you like that. Yep. <laughs> As opposed to the Chrono Trigger, where the enemies are mostly predictable on how they're going to move and where they're going to stay. Sometimes in Chrono Cross, they'll wander halfway across the screen. You'd be like, why are you there? I've never seen you there before. And that's just <laughs> the Chrono Cross experience. Exactly. So we have another tutorial here with uh, Salt and Pepper. They're explaining elemental weaknesses to us in their own particular inept way. And uh, this is where Oops. picking Salt and, uh, or pick, excuse me, picking Lena and Poshal helps because Poshal is a pretty heavy attacker, does a lot of physical damage, has a suboptimal stamina recovery. So it just makes this fight a little bit faster having Poshal here. The main reason we really want Lena is because Lena has a really high magic stat and she's blue innate. And there are certain elements in this game that can only be used by the innate Keller character of the element. One of them being a summon that we're going to pick up later called the Frog Prince. So we need somebody with decent magic stat who is blue. Lena fills that uh, requirement and she's going to help us carry us through the really big dungeon at the end of this, this uh, run. So we're heading to Termina and... It joins anyway. There's Glenn. Hi, Glenn. I'm I'm scared to look at Glenn's names right now, but <laughs> <laughs> that's warranted. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of those things we were talking about in the first dungeon, where we need the humor, the the fang, the feather, and we're gonna make some steel weapons out of these, which normally we shouldn't have access to. And this is one of these game facts moments where if you never like looked up in a game fact, you wouldn't know you wouldn't know that this item exists or that we can use it in the way that we're about to use it. So we're going to run past the blacksmith into this manor in the back of town, and there's a hidden chest underneath the stairs that gives you the profiteer's purse. This is a accessory that just gives you more money at the end of battles, which is, it's all right. There's better accessories to use, but if you disassemble it at the forge, it gives you iron. So we're going to take the iron from this, plus the stuff we picked up at the start of the game, and we're going to steel swallow and an iron dagger for Kid and Surge, which is going to make them do a whole bunch more damage than they should be doing at this point in the game, and it's going to make Viper Manor way more manageable, because let me tell you, if you play this casually, the Marcy fight and the Lynx fight are mean. They're, they can <laughs> still be mean, but we've got better ways of dealing with them, and the steel weapons help a lot. So now we come to this sort of big choice at the early game. You have three ways of getting into the manor. You can pick up Pierre, Guile, or Korcha. We're going to go with Pierre because his requirement to get in is we just run outside and grab this metal from a kid running around, which let me tell you is harder than it looks sometimes, especially if you try to do it on fast forward. <laughs> I, yeah, no judgments. <laughs> See, it's, it's awful. <laughs> Even without fast forward, yeah. it's going to be terrible. The hitbox on that child. Uh, but all we have to do is get that metal, talk to Pierre, joins our party, and walk straight in the front door. There's no side dungeon or anything. They either do have entire side areas you have to go through that are pain in the butt. We didn't name Pierre, right? I don't uh, think he's no. on the... Yeah. Our next name is uh, coming up is going to be... Oh, gosh, we've got everybody except for Glenn, right? Yep, that's correct. Oh, okay, Glenn's last one. Cool. So now we've got Pierre, and with Pierre and our party, we can walk in the front door, and one of the things with Pierre is that his entrance, uh, we get more salt, pepper, and uh, a third guest who I love dearly. He's he's fantastic. <laughs> and entering this section, we've got a lot of these fights with the guards. And past all of these guard fights, we want Pierre to be alive. But he may be dead for a couple of fights in a row. <laughs> Pierre likes to take a nap. We support naps around here. 
And I see we're already being nice with our accuracy. Come on, Surge, kid. Yep. Get your axe together. So after this, we charge the gate and then salt and pepper appear, and then they bring in their new friend. And the this is a tutorial on revive element, which is completely missable, which is interesting. Because if you go the other two routes, you don't get this tutorial anywhere else. You can find a revive in the manor, which is great safety. And uh, they will always KO the person that's in the front of your party, which is why we have Pierre in front right now. Because Pierre is kind of a joke character. His stats are terrible. Even with uh, his perfect set of items, like the hero set, it brings him up to being about average, and it takes up his uh, accessory slots. So it just makes him suboptimal as a character. And that means that we're not super unhappy if he's taking a nap in these fights. This fight ends based on ketchup in the center. That's ketchup with an O. We love ketchup around here. You have to do a certain amount of damage to him, and then he will knock out the other two. So we're not going to bother with them at all. He's just going to use this fantastic attack. If you've never seen this before, please appreciate it. Taking out Pierre there is a nice bonus because it goes down, it can be annoying. And then we just finish up catch up, and that's the end of this fight. Uh, we can... Uh, if you're feeling spicy, there is a, a bonus drop here you can get from a steel, but we'll be doing some steals later on. The power glove isn't really worth the animation time, but now we're going to be moving into a section of the manor. We got some, you know, errands to do. We got to do a little mini game. If you have a couple quick donations, three each now would be a good time. Sure do, and I'd love to give everyone an update. We are at $1,965 out of 4000 for the Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. We can make that happen, folks, but we are running out of time. We got to do that before the end of this run. So if you want to see that, go ahead and get those donations in. And I'd love to read a $50 donation from Steve Hot Prowl, who says, Good luck on your run, Jerrica, and congrats on your CT world record. Let's get a train going so she can do it again tonight. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Steve. So we have to go in here. Uh, to get in the front door, we need a key. We're going to just go into the stable and help an old man, and he gives us a key without asking any questions. I feel like this is another just classic RPG trope here. And uh, th this looks a little bit hectic, but the pattern here, if you follow the, the correct inputs here at the start, the pattern of the dragons is the same every time. So when they get lift their heads like this and start wiggling back and forth, they're hungry. If you don't feed them in time, they get a little bit angry. They turn slightly red. And if any of them get fully red after not feeding them three times, the minigame is over. We only have to do this minigame on any difficulty to progress. And the lowest difficulty is feeding 10 of them. So we just do that real quick. We know the pattern that they're going to show up in. Makes it a lot easier. Then we can progress into the manor. Also, Jerrica is going to try for what we call the, the guard skip here. So normally, going in the front door, there are guards that will force a combat on you. But if you get this guard to aggro you, to chase you, and then get them to drop their aggro right in front of the door, you have one frame where if you're lined up correctly, uh, you can interact it. with the door. The problem is lining up correctly is a whole lot harder than it sounds because you're in the dark, there's no good visual reference, and you only have one frame to get the input. So even if you're using a 30 hertz turbo, turbo is legal on the PC boards, you still only have a 50-50 chance of getting it because only one frame where you can actually put in the input. So it's a little bit mean. A lot of times what you'll see is people go for it, they don't get it, they just kill the fights anyway. So Jerrica is going to go do that, figure out these enemies. And what it does is it gives you a few extra tablets. It gives you an opportunity to, if, you know, Pierre hadn't survived the previous fights, now you can heal up Pierre because you do want him alive for some of the fights coming up it's because we do want him to cast some elements later on. So what can happen is when you're fighting all the guards, they keep knocking Pierre down over and over again. And then it's really annoying. You have to go into a menu to heal him. So having any fight that he survives and can heal him in the post battle menu is really nice. So now we have chat. We want guesses. Two numbers, one through nine. They can be the same. Low numbers are good. High numbers are bad. Get your predictions in. I'm feeling 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. <laughs> two, three would be pretty good. But I'm, I'm curious what chat thinks. This is completely random, and it's the number of times we have to spin the statue up top to progress. So the worst is 9-9, nine, nine, but statistically it seems like the two numbers being the same is a little bit less likely. 
So the, the worst that you're likely to see is 8-9. 9-9 is possible, but very rare. Best is 1-1, one, one, very unlikely. 1-2 is possible, more likely to see. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a couple very nice accessories in the this uh, manner. There's a couple items. The Dragoon's Honor, which increases your accuracy and your strength, as well as your magic stat a little bit. And then there's going to be the Dragoon's Gauntlet later as well, which is plus three strength. So that on Surge, with the Steel Swallow that we, we picked up earlier, which again, we're not supposed to have yet, is going to make him hit really hard at the end of the dungeon. So we have to follow Glenn in here. While we're waiting on Glenn, we pick up this revive, and then we talk to the wall, and 2-4! Ooh! 4 That was close. That's still very good. That's on the, the low side. Did anybody in chat guess a 2-4? If so, congratulations. So now we have to go into the treasury. We're going to progress, fight a few bosses. Uh, the main thing here is that on a normal full game run, we'd pick up some extra things here for uh, money. Depending on how spicy you're feeling on a Lynx run, you can skip this because we don't actually need as much uh, money in this route. Uh, it definitely makes sense to pick it up anyway <laughs> on a marathon run, though. You're never sure what's going to happen. So we're going to give uh, the turn yellow to Pierre. We're going to equip that Dragoon's Honor onto Surge. It'll make him hit a little bit harder. And we also picked up that armor just for a little bit of safety so that, you know, Surge is going to take a little bit less damage. And this is the first time we're going to see us manipulating colors to our advantage. So these enemies are going to be green, so their opposite color is yellow. And what you can do is the turn yellow element can be used either offensively or you can cast it on your own characters. So if we cast turn yellow on Surge, who's normally white, he'll become white and yellow. And then that, that means that he'll be yellow, which is the opposite of the green enemies, and he does a little bit more damage with physical elements. If you want to do physical damage, you cast the turn yellow on your character. If you want to increase the magic damage that they take, you cast the turn element on the enemy, uh, which will come up a little bit later. But you'll see that Surge is just doing way more damage than before. He was doing like 23 at the start, the first guard fight. You saw a 63 there for a second. We're ramping the damage very rapidly. And this is just using all of the overlapping game systems to our advantage at the same time. Uh, it'd be really nice if they would, you know, actually hit instead of missing Surge oh, Kid. Oh gosh, the misses. This is the Chrono Cross experience because sometimes you just go for it. You're like, we'll, we'll play it a little bit more risky, go straight for the 3-3 three, three, and then you just get punished. So this is my favorite game facts moment. There's going to be a chest coming up here that has the Dragoon's Gauntlet in it that I was talking about earlier. Every time you try to open it, Karsh yells at you. Uh, the game facts, the most popular game facts on the internet, I haven't checked it in a while. This may have been updated. It used to say that you couldn't get this here and you had to come back later. But what happens is if you actually interact with this chest 20 times, he gives up unless you have it. Which, which to be fair, who's going to try that casually? Uh, I totally get it. Uh, but that is a huge boost to our damage, plus three strength. So now uh, Surge's effective attack power is 32. Absolutely bonkers. And we're going to enter our code here, which is 2-4. As a reminder, this door sucks. Thank you. Yeah, that door sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're going to head into the Marcy fight. So if you have a quick donation here, Threech, this would now be a good time. Definitely. We have a $10 donation from Oh No, who says, extremely proud of you, Jerrica. Oh, oh No, thank you so much. So this fight coming up is the first time where we're going to manipulate boss health pretty significantly because we're going to go up against Marcy, and if she goes to critical health where she's kneeling and she gets a turn, she's going to cast an Ice Blast on us, which is a very high-level element. It hurts a lot. She also likes to cast it twice, and it can freeze your characters. It's really bad. It can go as bad as just wasting time to possibly even wiping you if she freezes the wrong characters. So what we do on this fight is we count our number of misses, and if you're feeling really spicy, you count the exact damage. But in general, if you just follow the script we have, we've got some diff diverting scripts for if you miss here or not. And then what we're going to try to do is get push her very close to critical health and then stop, let her take a turn. Then we're just going to do a ton of damage to her to finish her off before she gets her next turn and skip the Ice Blasts. 
And this is another reason why having Kier up as alive is very useful, just because he's another target for Marcy to kick and slap when she's taking her turns. Unfortunately, Thurge and Kit still haven't figured out how to hit their attacks, but she's taking it out on Pierre, which is really nice. Yeah, that's great. So I think if this doesn't kill, you should be able to finish with the fireball. Oof. Yeah. Normally, that, that fight is less scary because Surge and Kid know how to hit their attacks. We also got the Ice Blast, which I yeah. wasn't going to mention in commentary until we got past it, <laughs> because the Ice Blast is her common drop, which is a very powerful element we can make very good usage of. And her rare drop is an iron, which we already have. <laughs> We're not supposed to have it yet, but we do. So the iron would normally be useful in a casual playthrough, but for us, we really, really want the Ice Blast. So instead, we just don't perceive the fact that that could happen until the fight is over, and hopefully we get the common drop. So now we've got one more guard fight, and then we've got the first Lynx fight, which is why this is Lynx 2%, or Lynx% percent, or Lynx at Fort Dragonia, uh, because we're going until we fight Lynx the second time. This is not actually a 30-minute run. We're not giving the games committee that much of a panic attack. And Lynx is another fight where we're going to manipulate the health pretty significantly because he has a, an element called a Nostrum equipped, which is a third tier healing element. It's consumable that heals for 200 health, which is a lot this early in the game, but it's also black elemental. So if Lynx uses Nostrum, not only does it give him a whole bunch more health, make the fight take a whole lot longer, it's going to make him do a lot more damage. But we can take advantage of Lynx because he has a couple programmed counterattacks. So the first time you hit him with any magic element, that, that he's going to counterattack with a an element that will reduce your magic damage done. And the first time you hit him with any white element, he's going to counter with an anti-white. So what we do in this fight is we use a lot of three threes on Surge, and any you just count a sort of like card counting in Blackjack. Anytime you get a crit, you add one. Anytime you get a miss, you subtract one. So currently we're plus one, because both threes hit and we got a crit. And the strategy on this fight just kind of at certain points tracks if your number is below this, do this strategy. If your number is above this, you can try to do this strategy. So we're still at plus one, which is pretty good. And then when we get lower, we're going to try and steal from him. Uh -oh. oh, he did too I much went damage. Too far. <laughs> That's uh, impressive. So what normally would happen is we try to steal from him here because... That would counter the count that would trigger the counterattack. And we also want the magic ring from Lynx here, please. Thank you. And that would cause him to counterattack onto Kid. Then it would give us some more time to attack him, get him low, and then we'd get to use the dash and slash. But unfortunately, Jerrica got too good luck and did too much damage. <laughs> so he used the Nostrum immediately. But it's alright, because he's being relatively nice here. Lynx is like Oops. some of the bosses, whenever he does physical attacks, he can use Oof. one, two, or three attacks, and he can use the light, the medium, or the fierce attacks. But when he's feeling really mean, what he can do, he can just walk up the surge and just go wham, 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 and use his heavy attack three times, and you're like, please, please, Lynx, don't do this to me. Why are you like this? Ah. Um, so not only is he keeps only doing the single attack he's doing the light one which is really nice and we should be okay yeah pretty close to dead here <laughs> <laughs> did not go well so we have a nice cutscene coming up here where kid is going to get poisoned and then of course continuing the lena theme the fastest option is to be mean to kid and abandon her uh, we're going to get the name drop of chrono trigger but this is going to take a little bit so if you have more donations for each now is a great time most definitely. Oh my goodness, chat. We have passed the halfway point for getting that Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run right after this one. But folks, we are running out of time. So I have a challenge for you. We hit the statues two times and four times. And two plus four is six. So chat, can we see a six dollar donation train? And I want you to tell me, what is your favorite PlayStation 1 game? 
out of all of the ones that were released, what is your favorite? You tell me on a $6 donation train, add that donation toward the incentive to get that Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. We are running out of time, but we are helped along by things such as the $25 donation from Namven, who says, go get them, Jerrica. We love you. Yay, Namven. Thank you. You still have plenty of time, by the way, for each. Keep going. Fantastic. Thank you. We've got a $25 donation from Dr. John W., who says, Happy to donate during Chrono Cross, one of my favorite games when I was growing up, to meet a challenge incentive for Chrono Trigger, one of my favorite games of all time. Let's go. <laughs> and we've got... Chrono Trigger. <laughs> We've got a $50 donation from Squirrel611 who says, bonus run, bonus run, bonus run. Now that is the energy we're going to take into making this happen, folks. We are over halfway there. We can make it happen, but we have until the end of this run to get those donations in and make that possible. And, and so thank you just you. jumped off a cliff. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, go ahead. We just jumped off a cliff because uh, we were in a bad situation. We stole Kid's dagger because, uh, well, spoiler alert, she's not joining the party ever again, and we can sell her dagger. <laughs> it's a little bit extra money. It's good safety. And it turns out that the dagger that Link's through has a very rare poison on it, and this is one of the big splitting points in the story. There's a whole side quest. You can go back to your home world, go find a Hydra, get the cure, come back. Gives you access to one of my favorite characters in this game, Razzly. But unfortunately, that's all optional and it's not fast. The other side effect is if we skip that whole section and we decide just to leave Kid to her own fate, that's how we get access to Glenn. And Glenn is absurdly good. Glenn is green elemental, very high strength growth, has good stamina recovery, and he has one of the few dual techs in this game with Surge. Because they still have the dual and triple tech system from Chrono Trigger, but there's far less of them. Not every character has a dual tech with every other character. That would be absurd to keep track of. But they have, as a shout out to Chrono Trigger, they have X Strike. Yes. X Strike is really good because it's really high power, uses both of their strength stats, and it's red elemental. <coughs> One moment. Gotta drink some water. So take a <laughs> donation through each. Absolutely. Um, I'd also like to add in here that if you're not compelled by the PlayStation 1 era donation train, Eden Bun sends in $50 and says, can we start a chain for a favorite Chrono Cross character? Mine is very obviously Razzly. Good luck on the run. Let's meet the Chrono Trigger incentive. Less than three. That's awesome. So it sounds like Rail Queen, you got to... Uh... Another favorite there, Razzly going. Yeah, Razzly. I love Razzly. <laughs> Alright, so we're kind of doing some errands around here. Um, we borrow uh, Corch's boat. He doesn't want to give it to us because we're not saving Kid. But um, his mom says, I'll borrow the boat and give it to him instead. Yeah, so we are taking the boat and matcha is great we love matcha she's got the big just i'm not going to take any crap from anybody energy yeah and we go back to termina and this is where we're going to get glenn which is me saying this as a reminder because oh, don't yeah. pull a me and forget to <laughs> rename thought. glenn i've only done this a couple of times during live runs so that's why i'm calling it call it a me thanks we're gonna, i appreciate it we're going to hit an element store here, which is going to give us access to a couple really nice elements. And then we're also going to go back to the blacksmith. So this is kind of our intermediary shopping trip. This gets us set up for the for next couple of dungeons. And after those next couple of dungeons, well, this category is over because we're stopping this run about a third of the way through. We're going to pick up some consumables that heal some uh, status effects that can happen in the next dungeon. We're going to pick up some curing elements, as well as a couple very specific attack elements that we're going to make usage of throughout the, uh, the dungeons coming up. And the important thing is that the iron tier of weapons, as opposed to the copper tier, which is the starting tier of weapons, well... It's the second tier. The iron tier weapons almost all carry a accuracy boost on them, 
So even though Lena doesn't do a lot of damage, getting her her Iron Ladle will actually increase your accuracy. And whenever we're charging up the element levels on Lena, which we're normally going to do by just spamming a lot of one attacks, misses are bad. So we get her, her Iron Ladle anyway, just because on average it winds up being much faster. It doesn't take very long to menu for. And just makes the route more consistent. Now we've got an Iron Sword for Glenn. We've got an Iron Ladle for Lena. Now we're just going to head back, recruit Glenn. Uh, now would be a good time if that to give us the name for each, Yeah, because he's just about to join. Oh, Glenn, you thought it was Frog, but it was me. Beat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Beat with a capital F, lowercase eat. Okay. The feet fatales have spoken. Today's the day. So much feet. What did we do? <laughs> I blame Big Scared for the shoutouts to Binary Breakers. Uh, good community of a bunch of non-binary and other gender non-conforming people that I am a part of. Big Scared is as well was the previous uh, runner who brought back the whole feet fatales thing <laughs> during their run. So we are, uh, now we've got Glenn in our party. We bring Matcha in because if you don't put her in the party, she's just a really long animation where she swims away. So it's actually faster to put her in the party than just swap her out immediately. And coming here is really important because this shop here has access to really, really good elements like Genius buffs your magic stat. Eagle Eye makes you more accurate. A bunch of these turn elements. There's also Weak Minded, which lowers enemies' magic defense. You can, you can sense a theme here because uh, <laughs> we're, we're setting up Lena to be a good magical attacker. Now we've got a way to lower enemies' magic defenses. We can buff her magic attack. Uh, so remember how I was saying that having a blue magic user earlier on is going to be very important? Well, we're going to augment that as much as we can. And uh, this is another great thing about the notes for Chrono Cross is these element menus are long and complex. And if you just follow the notes the community has, they will help you get through them. These are kind of a mess if you've never tried them before. And Handy in particular has put a lot of work into his notes, making them very easy to follow. Not only telling you like what level you're equipping things to, but we also resort the elements at several points to change where they are appearing on the list. And he's got really good notes if, to help new players go through this a little bit faster. So shout outs to Handy, Super Handy and chat. Uh, has put in a lot of effort to make this game a lot more accessible to people. So if you ever did want to try a Chrono Cross speed run, maybe a Lynx run like Jerrica's doing right now, there's uh, pretty great notes on the Discord for you to check out. Yeah, definitely. Huge shout out to Handy. He'll also come hang out in your stream. Yeah. The Chrono Cross enjoyer is that there's just this sort of sixth sense, wait, somebody's speedrunning Chrono Cross, and then they all just appear in your, your stream chat, and then they just hang out, and they're wholesome and cheer you on. It's great. Yeah. So before we can get to Fort Dragonio, there's this big mist and foggy, and it turns out there's a ship here that has, like, a fog generator on it, and they pretend <laughs> to be a ghost ship to, like, scare people away and rob them. Uh, and then we get attacked by the real ghost ship, so... We get delayed here a little bit. This is one of my favorite parts of the game. There are three required fights. One of them is just normal enemies, and you can run away from it, because you can run away from every battle in this game, even <laughs> bosses, and it just lets you retry the fight. But this fight, when you run away from it, Fargo just goes, oh, not enough challenge for you, huh? And it skips the fight. He just sasses you a little bit, and you move on. So it's one of like three fights, I think, that forced encounters you can completely skip by running away. And this is where Glenn comes in very, very common. Because Polly here, Polly's mean. <laughs> so Glenn is also a third person who can cast elements in what we're setting up. So you cast the blue, turn blue on Surge, will make him do more physical damage against a red enemy, makes the Ice Blast do more damage, and then Surge just goes to town. Unfortunately, Polly's AP, which is how quickly it, it acts, can roll very low or very high. So you can, if you get lucky, kill Polly before it takes a turn, or Polly can use the flap attack there and just take out Lena. Thankfully, <laughs> Lena survived. Yes. Yeah. 
because we do like it when she gains stats. We do want her to keep gaining magic. Uh, she's at 11 magic, pretty nice. Now we're gonna take on Fargo, who's blue element. And if you remember earlier, how I said the X-Strike is red element, that's gonna come in really handy because we can strengthen, which will increase the strength value of Surge, which will make X-Strike hit harder. It'll put a red element on the field. Then we can turn red, which will make him do more damage against the blue element. And then Fargo, Fargo, he's trying to be threatening, but it doesn't really work because he uses a strengthen on himself, which gives us a full red field, which is an even bigger increase <laughs> to red elements when he's weak to red elements. And then we just X strike him for ridiculous amounts of damage. Watch this damage. <laughs> now that's smart. So Fargo gives us a nice little demonstration of the power of manipulating the field effect in the top left corner. That's also important because in order to use summons, not only do they have to be used by the same color character, but the field has to be fully the color of the summon you want to use. So we have to do that a little bit later on. Every time we want to use a summon on Lino, we need to make the field entirely blue. We do have another short break here for a quick donation for each. Absolutely. Just want to update everyone again on our total. We're over halfway, but we're at $2,278 out of 4000 for the Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. We've just got about an hour left in the estimate, folks. So if you want to donate, if you want to see that happen, there is no better time than now. You are running out of your opportunities to do so. So exclamation mark donate to get that link in chat. Follow that and apply it to the incentive and you can make that happen. But you got to do it quick because we are running out of time. Bring that. Click that. Donate button. Ring that. Click that donate button. <laughs> All right. So chat, here's another opportunity to guess. One, two, or three. Low numbers, good. High numbers, bad. We have an RNG section coming up where one, three different pirates could have the key. Uh, we check them in a particular order. Usually finding the key faster is good. But we're also going to go for ghost skip here. Ghost dance where you can ah. lead this ghost in circles. Uh, because you have to clear several text boxes on that guard, and if you very particularly circle around the room baiting the ghost, you can do this entire section while skipping this fight. It's one of those things that's worth it to go for. If you miss it and you're still not super practiced on it, just kill the ghost. Yeah. It's also, a, these enemies give a lot of money, so it gives a lot of safety to the money route, even if you do miss it. Um, you had a good start there, just... Got you, got just stuck. got you the tip of his arm, unfortunately. Yep. And if you're a new runner and you ever run into a problem here, make sure you close all of the text boxes on that pirate. If you leave before you close all of them, the, the biggest boss in this game is doors, I swear. I know. Doors are the worst. Um, but if you ever leave without closing all the text boxes on that pirate in the corner, you'll get the secret fourth key option, which is where you have to talk to all three of the other pirates and then go back and he says, oh, I forgot, I have the key. And he'll hand it to you. So if you ever get fourth key, that's because you didn't close the text box. That is completely avoidable. I see a lot of ones, some twos, a couple threes. Fives is not an option. I'm sorry, <laughs> chat. <laughs> All right, let's see if it's one. Oh yeah, hey, one. one. First key, let's go. And there's a little bit of a split in the community on which order you talk to the guards in. So the one that Jerrica did is great if uh, if you do that and it's the first key, it's fantastic. So nice little luck to make up for Surge and Kid not knowing how to hit their attacks so far. Uh, I swear, this enemy behaves different on Radical yeah, Dreamer's Edition. Sort of what you just did dodges it every time on console, <laughs> but it doesn't on PC, and I, it annoys me. So we're going to make our way to the JRPG-required undead boss, which we are going to take advantage of by healing it to do some damage. Uh, we got a couple dodges here. This whole section is really annoying, especially the little skull enemies. But this is another good opportunity for some donations if you if you want three. I love it. We've seen some ones, twos, threes, but we've also got some nines, including in the form of a thirty-six dollars donation from Azakale, who says six tickets for six games, please. Final Fantasy Nine, Lunar Two, Eternal Blue, Final Fantasy Tactics, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Parasite Eve. Oh, and Chrono Cross, of course. Let's get that Chrono Trigger incentive met. Less than three. Thank you so nice. much. And we've got a $10 donation from Kerplop, 
who says, Chrono Trigger was the first JRPG I ever played, and it's still a crown jewel in my video game experience. Gotta see it run. Absolutely, folks. We've crossed $2,500 toward the $4,000 total for that run. So if you want to see it met, make those donations happen. Put them toward that incentive. We can do this, chat. $1,500 to go. Absolutely, we can do that by the end of this run. But now is the time. So currently, just to catch you up on story, the pirates who attacked us, poisoned us, and took us prisoner have now trusted us to helm the wheel of their ship <laughs> because Fargo's arm is injured. And now we're going to fight this giant skull. So we're going to do most of the damage here uh, with uh, Surge doing physical attacks, but he's going to use Diminish, which reduces the damage of all elements, but it doesn't reduce healing. So when we're just going to be moving the turns onwards, we're going to have a point here where Lena's got a bunch of element levels and we do need to advance things forward. So why not throw this Cure Plus onto the, venom, the boss for about 100 damage? Hey, that's, that's not too shabby. <laughs> and the Eagle Eye, what the Eagle Eye does, because I haven't fully explained that yet, is it sets the accuracy of all of our attacks 1, 2, or 3 to 99%. That is not a display error. It is not 100%. It is 99%. You can miss. Ask me how I know. Uh, every runner, if you run this enough, will you will get trolled by a really bad 99% miss. It's awful, but it's, yeah. it's just part of running this game. <laughs> and the first time it happens, clip it, post it in the Discord, and you'll get a lot of sympathy from the runners. <laughs> exactly. But that was a pretty good fight. Uh, we didn't get the 99% the miss. And now we're going to move back down here because there's a magnify element that appears in a second shop here, and magnify is fantastic. It's the opposite of the diminish element that boss just used on us. Increases element damage by 50%, just a straight multiplier. So we've, we've, we've got a lot of force multipliers coming into action here. We've got genius, which increases your magic stat. Uh, Weak-minded, which reduces magic defense. We've got equipment, which reduces raises the base magic value on Lena, like the magic ring. We could get another magic item here. We've got the Dragoon's Honor, which increases magic. And then we've got Magnify for just a straight extra 50% damage. And then we're going to use a Summon, which is really high power. So a lot of the really tough bosses that we'd have trouble dealing with quickly in this dungeon, we can use the Summon for by Lena. The problem is it's a really long animation. So we have over time problem solved a lot of these bosses to get through them without the summons just because it is so much faster if you can get away with it but the problem is like tarasoid has like 1200 health it's just ridiculous using the summon is just the fastest way through of a lot of these upcoming fights so coming up we have the return of salt and pepper and we also have the www hype <laughs> Whether or not you like the W or the WH, get ready to spam it in chat. It will become very obvious on when you need to spam it. It's a very fine Chrono Cross tradition. I, I, I think chat can handle being asked to spam things. I think that's something they like to do. Yes. And uh, well, the other thing we're doing here is we're going to switch all of our strength accessories over to Glenn because he's opposite color of Salt and Pepper, and he's opposite color of one of the, the second to last boss in this dungeon. So Surge is being turned into a support. Glenn is our main carry here, and we're just gonna blast through this dungeon. If you've only played this game casually and you haven't seen the speedrun strats, you're in for a treat. There's a lot of really creative things that we do in this dungeon, but get ready chat. Here comes the spamming. <laughs> So this tutorial here, they're teaching us about how you can trap elements. It's a whole interesting system casually. We're never going to make usage of this in the speedrun. It's too slow, and the elements that you can trap with it are generally not worth the animation time. But the, in the tutorial, they just trap the, el the elements so they can't use it, and Pep War gets really mad. So w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w w is really angry at Salt, he can crit like he just did. And that matters. <laughs> that takes away from his health total. So nice crit, my boy. Thank you very much. Yes. Always helping out. 
So in this fight, what we're looking for is whether or not... Ooh, another crit. Dang, Pepor's angry today. We're looking for if Glenn crits on Salt, which he didn't. So we're going to have to do a little bit extra damage to Salt to take him out. And while we're doing that, we're going to cast the Bush Basher on the Pepor, get some more green elements into this top left corner, which also makes Glenn hit harder. Uh, then we're going to switch over to Surge, going to do a little bit of filler damage, and then we're going to cast another Bush Basher, so the, uh, the field is all green, so now Glenn is super buffed. And then, Glenn, come on. <laughs> if Glenn got a crit there, that would have just finished the fight. He's, he's not uh -huh. feeling cooperative. Lena's missing with her ladle, which is unfortunate because the ladle makes the best sound <laughs> on a fierce attack. It's, it's hilarious. I hope you get to hear it on uh, Son of a Gun coming up. Glenn's got 18 strength. That's pretty good. Iron Vest, Iron Mail. Those are the safer options. Uh, I like the Vest and the Mail. They, they have rare drops of another Gauntlet, which is plus three strength, or a Sky Gin Ring, which is plus three magic. Very great offensive options, but having those over the, the armor drops makes this next fight a nightmare because we're going to go up against the red dragon here. Uh, definitely re recommend remembering to touch that save point. Oh yeah, good thought. Because um, one of the nice things on the Radical Dreamers edition is they added auto saves, and just touching the save points gives you an auto save. So especially throughout this dungeon, there's long sections where something could happen. If we're just running by a save point on a marathon, you just touch it, gives you the auto save, you can keep moving. But the Red Dragon is one of the only fights in this game where when you run away from it, it doesn't let you menu in between. Most bosses, when you run away, they'll let you open up the menu, heal, change your equipment, and that kind of stuff before you go back and ch ch challenge them again. Red Dragon just gets upset at you for running away and starts the fight again. I was looking so at the you, names of the people, and I was like, wait, who is who on this? <laughs> yeah. I had a live marathon run where they named everybody the same name, and it was oh, a man. Oh, my goodness. So the Red Dragon <laughs> uh, has a really nasty fire breath attack. Uh, we really don't want him to use it on Lena. So what we're going to do is we're going to be buffing up Glenn, making him blue, which puts a blue element on the field and also weakens that fire breath. And then we're going to wait for him to fire breath, and then we're going to use a Magnify and then use the Ice Blast on Lena, which is a really nice high level blue element. So now we've got the field on top left to two blues. This Fiery Breath does less damage. You see how much damage that does with two blue on the field. Now imagine if he does that on Lena with the reds there. It's awful. Uh. So now that that's happened, it looks like we got a little bit off Oops. script, so... Yes, we did. Uh, I'm trying to figure out... I think you're still fine. Oh. Does Glenn have the revive? Um, I th think Surge mm -hmm. has it right now. Right? Should yeah, be on I level think, two. I right. So we can still get past this. He is going to use another Fire Breath because we got a little bit off script here. And uh, we just got to hope that he doesn't use the uh, Fire Breath on the wrong person. If it goes on Surge, Surge should be good. Uh, another Aqua Ball should... Oh yeah, Cure Plus would work too. She's going to get more blue on the field. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> good heal, yeah. He's low. Um, if you could throw a high-level Aqua Ball with Lena, that ooh, should hopefully finish him <laughs> off. Come on, fall over. Oh, man. All right. You should still have the AP to attack with Glenn after this as well. Nice. What? Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> he was so close to dead. <laughs> oh, that's so rude. Okay, so we're going to miss an opportunity to gain strength here on Glenn, but we got through it. That, that's that's why that's the even thing. in the marathon, it's like, just touch the save point. Don't, don't mess yep, with it. Exactly. Um, oh, but Glenn... Did you heal Glenn? Nope. Well, you can run away and heal him in the post-battle yeah. thing and then just go back in. <laughs> Whoops. It's fine. Everybody has wound up in that situation. We had a little bit of a butt clench situation. We got <laughs> through it. 
And now we have to fight the three devas. This is actually a pretty difficult fight uh, because uh, Marcy, uh, I would definitely recommend running. I know, I, uh, oh man. Yeah. I was trying to get a heal. Oh, I guess I the tablets for the heal. Yeah, just to use the consumables. But now we'll have to go to the menu, unfortunately, but it's fine because you can run away from every fight in this game. And most of the time, they just stand there and let you open up the menu and do what you need to do. It's really what part of makes, what makes this game really accessible to newcomers. I just wanted to you, showcase that for y'all. That's all. Yeah. Because if you make a mistake and you're like, oh my god, I can't win this fight anymore, you can just run away. You're not really going to be in dangers of run of game overing unless you don't know how much danger you're in, which has definitely happened to new runners every now and then. But then you'll learn, you'll know when the good places to run away are. But the, the key strategy here is we want to take out Marcy first. Marcy has very low AP, so she acts a lot, and she still has very powerful attacks. Fortunately for us, her HP meter hasn't really gone up a whole lot, so she does go down pretty easily with both Glenn and Surge having pretty high strength values and casting that Strengthen, what we're going to do is we're going to try and just X-Strike her, and it should just take her out. We have pretty high strength. Like, yes. come on. Yeah, there we go. And what that means is now we've got uh, Glenn, who's been buffed, who's the opposite color of Zoa, which you have to say with some emphasis because it's all caps. Yeah. And uh, he should be able to take out Zoa pretty <laughs> easily here do a bunch of damage, and then Karsh by himself is not much of a threat. Zoa does high damage, but is uh, very slow acting. We definitely don't want to leave him alive for too long, because if he gets to the turn after that one, he's a really hard-hitting element. You don't want to see it. Uh, so this fight's going pretty well. We just, uh, you know, wanted to show off the reset, <laughs> you know, just running away to start a fight exactly. over again. Exactly. Great showcase, Jerrica. <laughs> <laughs> We love but while we're cleaning up, yeah. Sir, if we I have was a second, say, while we're cleaning up Karsh here, we do have another cutscene coming up. Great time for some donations. Love to hear it. Thank you so much. All right, just updating everyone on that new game plus run for Chrono Trigger. Immediately following this run, which means we are so running out of time, folks. We are at two thousand six hundred thirty-four dollars out of four thousand total. Sixty-five percent of the way there, but chat. We have to keep going. We have to keep those donations coming in. And I would love to give you some updates on the donation and train that we posited earlier for your favorite PS1 game. And there's some patterns here that I'm seeing, including in a $50 donation from the knight who goes knee, Crash Bandicoot 3 has to be my favorite PS1 game. I gotta agree with you, honestly. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's up there. We got a $6 donation from 3Pup, who also says, my favorite PS1 game is Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. I love when the, I like when the funny Bandicoot goes, no! <laughs> Nutty Dog, hire me. Uh, we got a $6 <laughs> donation from Chibi Carrera, who says my favorite PS1 game is Crash Bandicoot, but I also really like Pepsi Man. And then $6 from Namben, who says favorite PS1 game, Star Ocean, the second story, or Final Fantasy VII. So believe oh, it or yeah. not, this is a boss. Doesn't really look like a boss. Doesn't have a lot of health like a boss. But this is a stand-in uh, because there's an optional side quest you can get uh, you can go do, we skipped it. Uh, but if you don't do that side quest, this boss, at the air quotes, gives you the blue summon that we were talking about earlier. I don't know why, but it's really useful for us because right after this fight is when we get our fifth element level. Oh, actually we got it before this, but we get the fifth element right level right at about the same time. Didn't get the freeze, unfortunately. You can get lucky, freeze this enemy, and then he doesn't get to use his annoying attacks, but uh, you should be fine to just punch him from here. Yeah, actually, he gets kind of bad if you let him stay alive too long. Yeah. That burn, uh, what that does, the red dot above uh, feet there is Surge just got burned. Sorry, feet just got burned. Which lowers his defenses, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but this, this enemy doesn't have a ton of health, like I was saying, so just a little bit more damage. There you go, and he falls over. So now we've got Frog Prince. This has to be equipped on at least a level five element slot or higher. It can only be equipped by a blue element character. And in order to use it, the field effect in the top left has to be all blue. And now we talked a little bit about this, but I'm gonna get a little bit more into the weeds of the combat system to explain how we do this. As casually, this is really hard to do if you don't know how some of these things work. So whenever you use an attack or an element or anything, the AP value of an enemy counts down. Uh, a one attack 
costs 1 AP, a 2 attack costs 2 AP, a 3 attack costs 3, 3 AP. Those all use the same number of stamina, so 1, 2, and 3 stamina. Elements use 1 AP but cost 7 stamina. So what you can do is if you get everybody to have high element levels and then you let the enemy move, even though you're using a ton of stamina, you can cast three elements for three AP and the enemy doesn't get their turn. Which then lets you fill up the field effect to be all blue and you can cast the summon a lot more easily that way. This is never explained anywhere in the game <laughs> and makes using summons very difficult until you get the field effects, which are literally in the final dungeon of the game. So a lot of people casually playing through for the first time just don't understand how to use summons because if you're just using them how you would think to use them casually, it seems impossible. But the, the key is generally to charge up the element levels, let the enemies act, and then use your elements right after they act to give you the most amount of time to fill up the field and then cast the summon. These bats are the biggest trolls. Oh, okay. Because whenever they do that, they can also switch directions on yep. you. Also, if you get too close to them, they can turn around and switch directions on you. It's it's the worst. It's the worst. And if you follow them too close behind, they slow down because <laughs> they see that you're close, and then they can randomly turn around while they're going slow. It's just, bats are the worst. Uh, I think those count as an RPG jerk bird if you have that emote unlocked <laughs> in chat. So this section of Fort Dragonia, there are two puzzles and two bosses on the slower floor. So that's the first puzzle, got trolled by the bats, and now we're moving on to Giant Gloop. We're you can do these and... more bats. Oh, oh come on, <laughs> bats, please. Uh, you could do the bosses in any order you want, but Tarusoid is a big pain in the butt. High defense, high damage, and tons of HP. So what we generally do is we go from left to right because when we take out Giant Gloop first, it gives us another level to gain some stats, gain more strength, gain more magic, make the Tarusoid fight safer and less annoying. I, when I first started playing this game, I didn't consider this and I did Tarusoid first and just made my life more difficult for no oh, reason. Oh, yeah. Do Gloop first, it's way easier. And also how we're talking about how it can be difficult to fill the element levels on the field, well, this boss uses a lot of blue elements, and in order to make it more quote-unquote difficult, partway through its script, it will use a blue field to make its blue elements hit harder. But, so we can take advantage of this, we're going to genius on Lena, and then we can use some elements and just set this up because this enemy's health isn't very high. So even though the boss will resist the blue damage and take less damage, it's still going to do enough just to kill, kill them in one hit here with this uh, Frog Prince. So depending on how unlucky you get here, the freeze can happen, it can throw you off, but Surge got frozen, we don't care about that anymore. We got Blue Field, we got the Genius off, we have Magnify, so now this Frog Prince is gonna hit pretty hard even though it's on a blue enemy, and that should just finish the fight. Oh, just a little bit of health left. Ah, uh, hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Got the low roll. I What's spoke up? a little too soon. <laughs> Maybe I, I wasn't paying attention to Lena's magic either. If it's up to snuff, I think she has twelve. We can oh. we can look here. Twelve should be fine. I think you just got low rolled. Oh, she has thirteen magic. Fourteen now. Yeah, that's surprising. The gloop survived that actually. <laughs> so we have another puzzle section coming up before um, the next fight. So another quick donation would be great for each. Awesome, thank you so much. For everyone keeping track at home, we are getting closer to that $4,000 mark. And just so you are aware, if we meet, when we meet that incentive for Chrono Trigger New Game Plus, that will put us at nearly $70,000 raised for the National Women's Law Center. So if that is a cause that is important to you, we know it's important to us. We would love to see your donations for that. And don't forget, you need to apply them to the incentive. Come on, folks, we are so close. We're running out of time. Put those donations in and make that happen. I know I want to see the Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. It's going to be awesome. All right. So these enemies are the worst. They like to phase in and out of reality. You could run through them while they're phased out. But the problem is they are barely visible when they're phased out. You can, can't see them very well. And how long they stay phased out is very random. And how they move while they're phased out is very random. So generally, your best bet is just to run straight at them and hope they behave, which 
neither of them did, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing is that unlike bosses, and normal enemies' AP rolls at the start of a fight can roll a zero, which means they act first. And they have a really powerful yellow element, which can actually just one-hit Glenn. So you don't want to get into these fights just because it's really mean to Glenn. Uh, but we got lucky on that. None of them used it, so here's Tarsoid. Tarsoid's scary, and the entire fight we have choreographed here is to try and make this as safe as possible. Because he's got some really hard-hitting physical attacks which, if they focus down Lena, can do tons and tons of damage. Mm, okay, okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I willed that into existence. That's my fault, Jerrica. <laughs> um. So what we're going to do is we're, he also has really high magic defense and high health. So we're going to go through a couple things here. We're going to use a weak-minded to lower his magic defense. We're going to set up a, a magnify. We're going to genius Lena. We're going to use all of our force multipliers just to make the, the frog prince hit even harder. But we have this routed out so that she defends first. Oh, oh. The nice thing is that when it comes to strengthen, genius, etc., those persist through death. So she's still genius, even though she died, which is way more generous than a lot of games would give you here. The problem is now we need to set up oh, uh, we can still a full do it. Okay. blue fields. Uh, I think okay. you can... Yeah, I, I don't know which can. version of the notes you're using, but there should be something well, there. Let's give it a try. The, the plus side is that his next attack is single target. So if this goes wrong, we can just run away, reset, try again. We're not in danger of getting game over here. Oh, except Surge is... Yeah, okay. Surge is negative stamina because of the revive. Um, Shoot, I didn't think about that. I think you just need to charge up some element levels. Hope he goes after somebody that's not Lena. Don't use your blue elements yet. Just charge up the levels. Um, let him act and then try to get it off afterwards. Gotcha. Or just defend, maybe? Yeah. So just get it. Get choke slam on oh. Lena. Yeah, you just got to reset. All right. Well. If he went after Surge, Surge could have probably survived that hit. Uh, and then we'd be able to recover it. But he's deciding he doesn't like Lena today. No. I oh, fast forward on. That was also just like unfortunate because with the defend on Lena and she's got the iron. She has, I don't remember if she has the mail or the vest. She has a high chance to survive that second hit and she just got high rolled. So just a little bit unfortunate. Tartarusoid gaming a little bit too hard today. So we're going to try that again. going to set everything up. Use the weak minded. We're going to genius Lena. We're going to use Magnify, let him take a turn, and then we're going to use the, the Frog Prince. And with Lena having 14 magic, plus oh, the Dragoon's man. Honor, plus the Magic Ring, it's going to do a ton of damage. Just need him to stop bullying Lena, please. This is right, a good start. Please. We got the genius off. We don't want to it's... magnify before the backdrop. Come on! Wow, I just cannot win here. The part of the problem here is that um, since Lena died earlier, she has a little bit less HP than she normally would. Oh yeah. Um, let's do. So I think you've got good element levels. I think if you just defend and hope he goes after somebody else, you're fine. He just needs to hit somebody other than Lena. It's oh just, he just hates Lena today. <laughs> what is this? Oh, man. This is absurd. I never have this problem. This never happens. <laughs> Would you say this has happened before? <laughs> if we never have a happened. quick moment... Uh, I just wanted to jump in here and let you know uh, that we do have a support, a, a supportive message for you. Uh, One hundred dollar donation from Anonymous that says, "Yes, that Jericandra." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you we got had some this. some good luck donations from the the crowd to empower Lena to, to survive these. So if you got any, go for it. How yes, about please. a five dollar donation from Sentient Sword that says, "Just showing support for the runner. Go Jericandra. Farm those cats." Aw, thanks, Sentient Sword. And thanks, Anonymous, nice. too. All right, went off to Surge. That's that's good. That's different. Yeah, so the first hit goes after Surge, and we've seen the damage that he's done with the Choke Slam attack. We should should knock on wood, knock on my head, uh, be good here. So he set up the, the weak 
minded, get the genius on Lena. We don't want to use the magnify yet because magnify works on any element. Even if it's a physical attack, it'll make it do 50% more damage. <laughs> Still goes after Lena. What okay. the heck? All right, so well. if we magnified early, that would do more damage. It's bad. So now we magnify. And now we need to fill the elements uh, in the grid in the top left, sorry, the, the field effect with blue. Uh, so what we're going to do for that is we just set up a lot of these level one blue attacks. Oh, you're killing me. I think you're still fine on um, stamina. AP? Okay. Yeah. As long as I can get another alpha. Of yeah, because he has 12 AP. So as long as you don't get another miss, you're fine. Don't say that. <laughs> no. I'm oh sorry. my god, you're killing me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have oh. said that. <laughs> and not only one miss, one more miss. I have like three more misses right there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I take responsibility for that one. That one was my fault. <laughs> The first right. two were just him hating Lena. The third one, that one was on me. <laughs> All right, we got through it. Like I said, it's a scary fight. So that's why you should do Tarasoid second and not, not, not Gloop second. <laughs> so we have another short puzzle segment here, Threech, if you have some donations. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as an update, we're at $2,659 out of 4,000 to make Chrono Trigger New Game Plus a glitchless run after this. Jerry Kander has the world record in this run. We want to see that happen, folks. We're getting uh, toward the end of this run. We've got about half an hour left in the estimate, but it could go faster than that. So if you want to see Chrono Trigger, it's one of the best games of all time. Now is the time to donate to see that. It's going to be so great. We love to see speed runs of it. Thank you so much to Heldon Sue Brett, who donates 50 dollars and says i realized i hadn't ring that click that donate button yet today and i love a bonus run incentive let's go chat so everyone ring that click that donate button oh yeah thanks so much also handy brought up a good point in chat thanks handy for answering a lot of questions people are asking in chat oh, yeah. while we're getting bullied by tarasoy <laughs> Um, you'll notice if you've been watching the run so far that Jarek Kendra keeps changing who's in the lead of the party. And that's not just for aesthetics. What happens is anytime we use a buff spell, it will default target the first player in the party. So whenever we're on those fights where we could be using a lot of stuff, Alina, you put Lena in front. When we'd be buffing our physical attackers a lot, we like to put them in front. Uh, so this is Son of a Gun. I like to call them creepy pasta because they make really weird faces. <laughs> And we're going to set up, has interesting gimmick, this happens in a lot of JRPGs, where they have really high defenses and they start changing whether or not they have high physical or high magical defense off and on. Glenn, please, come on. Seriously? Um, but what we can do is, with enough damage from a summon, which Lena has high enough magic, we should be fine here, you can just one-shot him before he does any of the, the phase-changing stuff. Ah. Oh. All right, well, I missed at least. Uh, I don't think we have enough blue elements to charge up again, do we? Uh, you've got... Oh. Got Aqua Beam. You've got, got Aqua Beam on Lena. You've got another one on Surge. Uh, I think you just, if you just want to try to fight through it, I think you just got to defend to get all your stamina back. Uh, but running away is also fine here. Yeah. Two. You want to use uh, Lena next because she needs to get oh, her yeah. stamina back. Yeah, then you should be good from here. Ugh. All right, I'm running away. This time. Yeah, <laughs> it just did not work out. What's well, son of a gun's uh, AP again? Seven. Seven. Yeah. 
So yeah, I guess that doesn't work if you don't have any leftover element levels. I usually just run away. So you hit one of them, that's fine. Yeah. That's... So for on this on this attempt, this uh, fight, we've got kind of two variations on the strategy, whether or not Lena misses or not at the start. We do a 3-3 three, three because at the start of the run, I was talking about how you can push enemies' turns backwards. Doing a 3-3 three, three is the main way that we do that because you can't take a turn until after Lena's done hitting both of her three attacks. And our main goal there was just to get some element levels on Lena. All right, we made it. So we got the Frog Prince off this time. I, I was thinking something, but I didn't want to curse you again. The problem is the bosses at the start of the fight, they start with a random amount of AP missing from their bar. So if you think of this like Final Fantasy VII where they've got that bar that fills up slowly and each number on the AP thing is just that filling up, that bar can start from anywhere to fully empty to like two ticks away from filling up. So this boss can be really mean because he can just interrupt you at the start and it's not very nice. So we've got one more really creepy boss, because if that wasn't creepy enough for you, we've yeah, got another exactly. one coming up. Uh, but we got a little bit more running here and a couple more pretty particular enemy dodges that are just mean. They should be pretty self-explanatory. So Threech, we have more to push for that Chrono Trigger incentive. Now's a good time. I would love to do that. We are on our way to making that happen. We're over $2,700, so we need just over, just a, actually just under $1,300 to make that happen. And that's made possible by donations, like this $100 donation from players A plus B that says more Chrono, please. And a $40 donation from Bowser who says, Jerry Kandra Chrono Trigger runs are the best. Aw, Bowser, thanks. So this is Bunyip. And Bunyip has a really nasty attack that they use pretty early on. That was, was that a two roll? Uh, I think so, yeah. Or maybe three. Okay. So this is a fight where if things go bad in the start, we definitely run away because the next attack that Bunyip is going to use is Inferno, which is a level yeah. six red AOE. It will do approximately 300 to 400 damage to the entire party. Especially that will with kill magnify. us instantly. <laughs> but with the magnify setup and this this ice blast, we can do enough damage to just phase it instantly. But this is one of the scarier fights in this dungeon because if it goes bad and you don't run away, this is one of those ones that will game over you. So we defeated him and this weird thing pops out. Um, I'm sure somebody in the Frame Fatales Discord is already adding an, a particular eyeball to this enemy. I look forward to seeing it later. Uh, and now we've got this black elemental enemy. So if you notice, there's been enemies for most of the elements colors that we've been fighting so far, Oops. but we haven't had a black one yet. So we're going to set up another summon here with using that ice blast on the first phase. The field effect carries over. So then we only had to use two more blue elements to fill it to be completely blue. And now Lena, with the magnify still active, is this summon is going to do 50% extra damage. So that Magnify hits both the Ice Blast in the first phase and this Frog Prince. Then depending on your stats, these will be either lower health or not. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll just use this Luminaire from Surge. Ooh, okay, Ooh, it's only the okay, we time. made it. Because <laughs> this does a pretty good chunk of damage, even if a Surge's magic is pretty low. We'll oftentimes just finish the boss off or just leave him within chip damage of... Uh, Lend to finish off. So very nice bunny up fight there. Yeah, not bad. All right, Glenn is twenty three strength. His feet. Right? His feet. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Out of context Glenn. Quotes, he has Glenn's feet. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have two boss fights left over. We're gonna do a couple pretty nasty uh, enemy dodges. We've got a cutscene. Uh, once we get fi get past that cutscene, we're probably in the last stretch of commentary. So just go with your donations, Threech. Oh, chat, we are coming up on the end, like Ray just said. So we gotta go. We gotta go. And chat, I bet you can meme us all the way to four thousand dollars. We're at two thousand eight hundred and eighty-four out of that four thousand dollars. So let me give you a challenge. 
Based on this $50 donation from Fierce Wolf, who has a great idea, ring that, click that chrono button. We've got the cross. <laughs> Let's get some trigger up in here, friends. Less than three. Chat, ring that, click that chrono button. You can do it. Thank you so much to Nick O for the $25 donations that says more chrono games. That's just chrono logical. <laughs> nice. Puns. And we have a $26 donation from XS who says, Nikki is blueprint print. Best Chrono Cross character, obvi. Legend of Mana is best PSX though. Get with it. So this fight right here is why we leave all the strength gear on Glenn because we're going up against General Viper, yellow elemental. So Glenn with being green elemental just naturally does a lot of damage. Viper giving us the low AP roll just to be a jerk. Yeah. This this fight thankfully isn't super dangerous. It's just how much time is Viper gonna waste? He doesn't have a whole lot of health. He doesn't do a lot of damage. But if he acts early, it's just a pain in the butt. He decided to act early, so he's gonna get a second turn here. He's gonna use the G-Force, the longer animation. It also puts a yellow on the field, which makes Glenn hit a little bit less hard. So we counter that by using a Bush Basher, put another green up. Now there's two green, one yellow. Take that Viper, and then we should be able to finish him off here with a 3-3 three, three, and okay. He wanted to get his word, final words in here, <laughs> and then the Sonic Sword. And now we're gonna be coming up against the, the titular Lynx fight, the Lynx percent. The reason why this is Lynx at Fort Dragonia, Lynx 2, Lynx percent, however you want to say it. 24 strength, yeah. nice. And one of the big things with the Lynx fight is he's a jerk. I think it's a second or third term. He uses one of your elements on you. He randomly picks an <laughs> element that you have equipped and casts it against you. It's one of the meanest things I've seen a JRPG boss do because it actually consumes it and makes it so you can't use it for the rest of the fight. So we're going to buff up Glenn. We're going to give him a turn white so that he does more damage against the black elemental links here. And then we hope that we don't get the worst combination of spells. Because what can happen, is, and I've seen this happen before, is he can take your weak-minded and cast it on you. <laughs> and that's really bad when he follows that up with a high-level element later on. So, but it's like such a particular string of events. He has to use the weak-minded. You have to miss a bunch so that he gets another element off on you later. Please leave Glenn alone, oh my Lynx. Gosh. Oh my goodness. And then ideally we're just going to keep wailing on him with uh, Lynx or with Glenn and Surge here. They're going to take two turns. Lynx. He is doing to do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm once again feeling like this is my fault for willing this into existence. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. He went after yeah. Lena. Okay, Pick we're good. Lena for a little bit. And he's Oops. pretty close to dead, so you should just be able to finish with uh, physical attacks here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then time will be uh, when this dialogue closes, so be ready. And that's time. I'm clapping very quietly so it's not super loud on stream. Good job, Jerrica. The game was very mean, but we got through it. Yeah, yeah. That's the main thing. We got to the end. Um, so yeah, so that's a, a third of the game. Um, yeah, I guess we can kind of show off the what happens here and then it'll, it'll leave, leave like a cliffhanger for you to finish the game. Is this the panther demon? Yes, this is the panther yeah. demon. We're having a flashback to that happening in our past, but uh, Classic Jerica, panther do you have demon. shout outs while we're, you know, letting things play out? Yeah, definitely. Um, huge shout out um, to Rail Coon, obviously awesome, another face fast forward runner. She runs in, in the category with me, um, as well as I think Handy's in there now too. Um, but like uh, they were saying, uh, uh, Handy also, Huge shout out to Super Handy. He does all the notes. I need to get the updated notes, but uh, even what I've got is always really good, and he's always really helpful. Um, huge shout out in general for uh, the Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross Discord and community um, for like helping, just being super helpful and friendly. And at me as a brand new runner, uh, speedrunner, never speedrun before. Started with the Trigger, got into Cross. Um, 
just had a really good time. And then huge shout out as well to all my friends and fam that showed up and, and uh, hung out and sent donations and uh, gave, gave me encouragement. I really appreciate it. And, it's, and thanks so much for having me on as well. And So, is there an update from the host? Oh, okay, yeah. What are we doing on Chrono Trigger? We are doing great, but we still have a bit to go, folks. We are at over $3,000 raised to make Chrono Trigger New Game Plus happen. We've still got... I mean, we're running out of time. So, if you want to see that happen, and I want to see that happen, we all want to see it happen, let's let Jerichandra play a little bit more to make this happen. Jerichandra has got the world record in New Game Plus. It's going to be amazing. After this follow-up of Link's Percent from Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition, how could you not want to see more? It's a Chrono Trigger has been a pivotal game in the RPG scene. There is so much more to show, and we want to see some fast-paced, difficult fights that are absolutely broken in New Game Plus. We've just passed three thousand two hundred dollars. We're at three thousand two hundred eighty-nine awesome. out of four thousand. So we're just about there, folks. But we have to keep pushing. We can see that incentive. We want to see it happen, and a lot of you do too. I can see some donations coming in, like fifty dollars from Milia Strange, who says, "Pull my Chrono Trigger." So let's <laughs> go. Let's make this happen. I also do just want to cut in real quick because Jarek Andra is too modest to say it. Go follow her at twitchtv Andra. <laughs> Does a lot of Chrono content on her stream. Just hit, or ring that, click that follow button. I see a shout out just got pushed in chat. So if you're not following, uh, definitely a worthy follow if you enjoy the Chrono content. Thanks so much. I also speedrun Dragon Quest XI, too. Um, oh, and I wanted to say, uh, I want to sing a little song for you about the Chrono Trigger uh, New Game Plus. Um, something song? like, Yeah, it's just a, a quick little jingle, right? So, I just met you, and this is crazy. Let's fight this hedgehog. Save the world, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that I canonically, never... Chrono Trigger was actually the first game to feature a hedgehog? Yeah, I never thought of Lavos <laughs> as a hedgehog, and I'm never going to be able to unsee that now. So thank you very much for that, Jerrica. <laughs> sure thing. All right. Well, thanks so much uh, again for having me out, and uh, thanks for such an awesome time. I'm glad we were able to... I'm, I was able to showcase this run to y'all. Definitely... Um, um, uh, check out the, the Chrono Cross Chrono Trigger Discord learn to speed run, come to my runs come hang out um, and uh, find out what the rest of this run looks like <laughs>